Today we're going to be talking about the new exciting nano needle. So nano needle, the advantages that we see compared to our, our previous nano is that it's very small. This is a 1.9 millimeter camera. Other things that we're really excited about is now the junction between the nanoscope and the choke car will now snap and click into place, which will prevent some of that pistoning that was a problem on the previous generation. Second thing we're looking forward to is these small ridges here are the north-south, so the surgeon knows which way is up and which way is down and gives them some proper orientation without looking compared to our previous scope. Other improvements, we've continued to use our pencil grip, so this will allow you to hold it, again, making ergonomic motions much better and much smoother. And again, the clip-on system is what really is making this system different and much improved from our previous system, where that camera will no longer piston, and other devices and cannulas will be able to click on here and be able to adjust and allow the surgeon to continue working. We also have some new cannulas. These cannulas have a diamond pattern at the insertion here, which will help with some friction on the soft tissue, allowing these to stay in place as the surgeon is working. We have two different lengths, a shorter one for a smaller joint versus a longer, depending on what joint you're going into and how much length you actually need. Another advantage of this is that it's interchangeable with our whole entire nano system. It can easily work with our new Sabre shaver that can go directly in here and have a working portal, and it can also be used for our new nano small joint instruments. Things we're excited about the new nano needle is the junction here that allows it to interact with a sheath and not piston. Second of all, the handle is much more lightweight. We've gotten rid of the redundant plastic and now made it very small and ergonomic. We also have these nice grips on the handle. These grips allow the surgeon to know north, south, and also the orientation when they're scoping. And you can see we've moved the plastic into this other control panel here. This control panel is about one meter away and allows the surgeon or an assistant to use the buttons to actually take the pictures and the camera for the surgeon. Uh, these buttons are programmable, so the surgeon can really dial in if they want this button to be the camera versus video, and this is adjustable per whatever the surgeon's needs may be for that case. One of the biggest advantages to the new nano needle is how the handle will now click into place. As you place it in, the surgeon can engage and then a small turn, and now it's engaged and no longer comes apart. In our previous model, it was no lock-in device, and this could easily piston during a case and become traction for the surgeon. But now with our new click-in device, this is no longer an issue. The device goes in, a small turn, and it locks into place, giving the surgeon ultimate control. The other thing that's interesting about this is it's much smaller and ergonomical, which will, the surgeon will be able to hold it in his hand in multiple different trajectories, either holding the handpiece or holding the pencil grip. Either one of these will allow the surgeon to adjust their hand grip for what's comfortable for them, given the joint they're scoping at that time. One of my favorite features about the new nano needle is how small it is. So it's easy to say it's 3.3, but when you hold it next to a 15 blade, that really allows you to judge. All you need is one simple poke hole. The nick and spread technique can be minimized, allowing the incisions to be very small and help your patients get back to activity sooner with much smaller incisions. So one simple stab. I like to hold my index finger and go right into the joint. Now the new nano needle comes in, snaps in in a small turn, and now it is connected to avoid any of that unwanted pistoning. And now the camera can be held like a pencil and allow the surgeon ultimate control. You're able to look around the joint very smoothly. Again, the pencil grip really allows the surgeon ultimate control. And as you can see, my hand is rested. I'm resting on the ankle. And just having my uh, muscles relaxed allows me more control and prevents surgeon fatigue over the long case. So once you're inside the joint, the shaver can come in very small. This is the new Sabre shaver. And what's nice is how small it is. So I'm able to negotiate inside the joint. You can see I have no friction. In my joint, I really have very minimal distraction in, but allowing me to be able to negotiate and move around freely, this is what really makes small joint arthroscopy nice. And the shaver has good control. It's small, uh, yet aggressive. So that's really what we're looking for, is small and aggressive. Some of the larger shavers can be more aggressive, but again, uh, you also want to be safe inside these small joints. I teach residents in this small joint shaver has really been an improvement in safety. The other advantage of the small shaver is the handpiece. The handpiece is much smaller than the standard large handpiece, which really allows the surgeon to be able to do both simultaneously. Because having a small pencil grip in one hand and a large shaver in the other hand really does not make much sense. So by switching to the new smaller lightweight grip, it really allows that equal control and balanced uh, approach that a surgeon is really looking for as they're going through a complex small joint. As you can see, it's very movable and agile inside this small joint you can see here. So now I want to talk about the SJ50. The SJ50 is really nice in the nano profile because it's 3.3 millimeters, which really allows it to complement the small size of the nano. As you can see, looking at the probe tip, it also has edge cutting 
the edge cutting it really allows the surgeon to have good control as we're getting near soft tissues and be able to control that cut more than uh, other ablators. The other issue about this is that it also has suction. So the suction really prevents the intra joint bubbles that can oftentimes obscure the view. So let's give it a try. So now looking at the SJ intraoperatively inside the joint, we can see that it's able to take these small pieces and actually use the, the side where I can actually be cauterizing while using the side and not endangering my articular surface or vital tissues, but yet allowing me to really gain visualization very nicely in a very safe, controlled manner. And as you can see, there's very few bubbles involved in this. The SJ ablator is also the only ones that has optimized suction. The suction allows for complete evacuation of fluid as I'm working, which allows for temperature regulation and for optimal viewing. Now, I know it's difficult to appreciate with the scope that I have here, but looking, we are over the dome of the talus, looking at the posterior three quadrants. Without nano needle, this is not possible. And then with this slight bend in the SJ, we can actually get to the back of the joint and safely work in the back of the joint with this edge cutting and not endanger our cartilage. This is not possible with a standard 4.0. If you can see this visualization, this is the entire back of the joint, which I would challenge anyone to try to do this with a 4.0 without causing iatrogenic injury. And you can see where I've just been. This cartilage is pristine. There is no grooves where I shoved my camera in. And again, we have very minimal distraction today. And that's what using nano needle really allows you to do is use minimal distraction, which can become a distraction uh, inside your case and allow you to get to the back of the joint safely with no bubbles. And this is deep in the back. So nano needle also provides the ability to look deep into the medial gutter, allowing you to evaluate the deltoid. So if you suspect deltoid injury when you're doing your lateral ligament reconstruction, it allows you to look over here quickly, examine your deltoid, and see if there's a component to deltoid injury as part of your ankle instability. So I frequently use this to be able to assess not only the articular surface of the joint, but also our ligamentous structures medially and laterally as part of my standard internal brace protocol. So using the Sabre Shaver really allows you to get in here and get the small joint. So in this case, we have a redundant uh, tissue in the syndesmosis. And I also use this to evaluate my syndesmosis. 10 to 15% of ankle instability will have a component to syndesmosis instability as, to it as well. So by using uh, Nano, I'm able to evaluate the syndesmosis intraoperatively, not only with a dynamic examination, but also direct visualization. There's plenty of literature out there showing us that direct visualization is much better than even our preoperative fluoroscopic examination. And you can see the shaver really does a nice job of taking it down and yet by moving it, I'm not getting into my articular cartilage, which really allows me to improve my visualization nicely, as you can see here. So now at this point, if I want to check out my syndesmosis, I could do a fibular translation test. We could stick a diagnostic probe in there and see if there's any instability. And again, with direct visualization, it really ensures that I'm making the proper diagnosis moving forward. Also, for my typical ankle instability, I'll stop right now and I'll do a tailor tilt during the case. Watching this dynamic examination really, again, reiterates my diagnosis that I've made. By watching this tailor tilt, I can appreciate the ankles on stable. And then complementing that with looking in the lateral gutter and seeing if I do have a patchless lateral capsule, thus indicating a repair of the lateral ligaments. Now we're viewing from the anterior lateral portal. So a slightly different topic, but when we're looking for our syndesmosis reduction, our trauma colleagues will often say they directly visualize their syndesmosis reduction. I would argue they do not. I would argue you need this view looking at the fibula, talus, tibia, getting this Mercedes sign right here, truly ensuring your syndesmosis is reduced. So that's why nano needle can be so integral on our fracture cases and in trauma. Another advantage of nano needle is how small it is. Now we can easily pop into the perineal sheath and look into our perineal sheath and do a nice uh, diagnostic examination of the perineals as we're here. Nano needle being so small, it allows me to travel up the sheath and actually get a dynamic exam where we can actually flex and extend the foot and watch the perineal tendons glide in their native position. Again, without disrupting the retinaculum, it really allows us to see, okay, there's an extra band of tissue in here. We should probably debride this back and uh, a small, maybe possibly a small tear right there. We can drive around the corner Again, getting great visualization as we travel. And if there was a tear, we could simply pop in our scope proximally, like right here, some scar tissue in the sheath, and we can go down to and continue to follow the sheath and the brevis right there. So again, being able to check out the perineals, minimally invasive is a very nice component. You already have a nano needle as part of your lateral ligament reconstruction, so why not pop it in and give it a quick look when you're here. So now we've flipped our patient, and we're gonna do some posterior ankle arthroscopy. 
we have the distal fibula down here and the medial malleolus right here. This is my area of my portal insertion. If I'm gonna go in the subtalar joint, I'll use the level of the medial malleolus here to get the angle going into the posterior facet. If I'm gonna go up into the ankle, then I wanna choose a more distal portal orientation to the tip of the fibula. But this is basically your working distance of where you want your portals to be between this area right here. So for this demonstration, we'll go into the joint, the ankle joints will make them a little bit more distal. Again, just a small stab incision on each side, and that's all you need. When you're posterior scope, as you begin to establish visualization, again, the SJ works really nice and is able to use a side cutting effect and really work the posterior subtalar joint, allowing good visualization and for careful, meticulous dissection. Just slowly take your time and be able to visualize the joint, and that's what it's all about. It's about safety and control. Now again, this is the subtalar joint. This is a joint that's not really scopable, is what they tell us. But with nano needle, we can get in here uh, for all my subtalar fusions and for my calcaneus fractures. I'm using nano needle for this reason. The 120 degree forward viewing is perfect for this because you're never going to see this view with a 4.0 scope. It's literally impossible to be able to see this far. Again, this was made possible by using a very small nano needle. So now, again, visualizing posteriorly. With nano needle being so small, we can actually look at the lateral aspect of the subtalar joint and actually take it all the way anterior uh, to the anterior subtalar joint, uh, the posterior facet. This is not possible, again, with a 4.0 scope. Being able to see this gutter like this and retrieve loose bodies or address any instability uh, or evaluate instability right here is also very nice.